Hey y'all, Bria Sharon East up here, and today what we're going to talk about is diastasis recti and what it is and things you can do to help. So excuse the dog for on my floor that I am now noticing we just gave my dog bath and he came to my office apparently. So for diastasis recti, the way to test is to see if there is a gap in between your abs. So what you're going to do is come up and see if you can get four fingers and how deep those four fingers go in the middle of your abs right above your belly button. So if you have like four fingers in there, you most likely have diastasis recti. So let's talk about some things we can do. So first thing I want to go over is how crunches do not help. And again, one of the reasons that crunches do not help is because most people do crunches like this. This is not targeting my abs at all. This is working my back and pulling on my neck. When I do a crunch, what I want to focus on is keeping that lower back in the ground. Same thing when we're working with diastasis recti. So what we want to do is first exercise we're going to go over is stomach vacuums because I want you to feel this core engagement. So we have our um, rectus abdominis, our oblique abdominis, and on top of that is our transverse abdominis. What we're working is trying to strengthen transverse abdominis, which is like our outer internal girdle, our outer abs that are our internal girdle. So by strengthening that up, what we're doing is really sucking everything in to tighten like an internal girdle, as well as working those pelvic floor muscles to keep everything engaged internally. So when pregnant, that's when everything stretches out and gets out of whack. So we're working to rebuild and suck all that together. So for a stomach vacuum, what you're gonna do is inhale through the nose, exhale through the nose or mouth, sucking that belly button in the spine, pushing that lower back in the ground, thinking of those abs knitting together. So try and put your fingers on your abs, take a deep breath in and exhale. And think about those abs knitting together. We're not keeping the chest popped out, that lower back's in the ground, pulling everything together. So the way that I like to do stomach vacuums is inhale and exhale, hold for five, four, three, two, one, going for 10. So let's try it together. Inhale, sucking all of the air in the belly button and exhaling. Pulling that belly button to the spine, knitting those abs together. Hold 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And again, you're pulling up and in from anywhere and everywhere you can. This is also great to do right before you go to the beach. So that's one. Inhale, and I'm not doing it really the best way because I'm trying to talk you through it. And it's hard to talk and hold your breath at the same time, but you guys get the picture. So again, trying to get this gap out from underneath our back. Inhale, exhale, suck that belly button to the spine. Five, four, three, two, one. Good, that's two. Inhale, and exhale. Five, four, three, two, and one. This is also called diaphragmatic breathing. Inhale and exhale. One, two, ex exhale all of the air out. Three, four, five, that's four. And one, two, three, four, five, that's five. Hold, inhale, and exhale. Five, four, three, two, one. That's six. This is also great for lower back pain. Inhale. And exhale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And inhale. Exhale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. Inhale, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, that's nine. Inhale, exhale, all the air out and hold. One, two, three, four, five, ten. Very good. Next exercise we're going to try is toe taps. Again, if this is any sharp shooting pain, stop immediately. 
But what you want to think about doing is, again, same thing, lower back in the ground, belly button to the spine, legs at 90 degrees. And we're working the lower abs by tapping and exhaling as we come up. Inhale, exhale, belly button to the spine as you pull up. Two, three, four, five, six. Modification is keep that leg that's holding on the ground. Five. This is our modification. Six. Seven. Either way. Eight. Really focusing on that exhale. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. 18, keeping the knees behind the hips. 19 and 20. Very good. Next exercise we recommend is planks. So flipping over for your plank hold, again, focusing on knitting those abs together, belly button to the spine. So you can do these on a couch or chair, wherever you need to. I recommend starting on your knees making sure that booty's not up, those hips are engaged. Inhale, exhale, sucking that belly button to the spine. Hold for 20 seconds. If the, you don't feel anything with this at all and you wanna take it up a notch, or you feel like you've mastered the plank on your knees, feel free to go for a plank all the way up and drop one knee down or both knees down. So however you need to modify 20 seconds, belly button to the spine. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and release. Very good. Feel free to stretch it out to a child's pose. I get very tight in my low back, so I always like to after a plank. Our next exercise is bird dogs. So the first progression of bird dogs is on your knees and on your hands. If you need to modify, you can come down to your elbows if you have any type of wrist pain, but I like to start out right here, shoulders directly over the elbows, directly over the wrist, starting by lifting one arm up, alternating. Once you feel like you got the hang of this, you can stay nice and core. Again, belly button stuck to the spine, abs knitted together. We'll take it up to a progression, working our legs. So exhale and tap, alternate, exhale and tap. Notice how my low back, again, I'm, I'm going in and out, but my low back shouldn't be moving. I'm not lifting my hips up, I'm not rocking around. I'm staying as stable as possible like I have a, cup, a hot cup of coffee on my back. Once you feel like you're ready, next progression is opposite hand, opposite leg lift. So toes facing down, heel is up. We're gonna exhale up and hold. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. You can also do these like we were doing earlier where you're doing one at a time in and out. I do prefer the hold in order to fully, fully, fully engage and get that mind muscle connection. And then opposite, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And then switch again, belly button to the spine knitting those abs together, coming down to your elbows if it hurts your wrist. Two, one, and then switch. Hands and legs should be on the same angle, should be parallel to the floor, hips facing down. And it's not, we're not worried about how high we can go. I'm not trying to really overextend that back. Again, 
The focus is keeping those abs knit together. I believe that was six, maybe two more each side. One more each side, 10 second hold. Four, three, two, and one. Last one, inhale and exhale. Two and one. Awesome. Okay, okay. Hopefully that's helpful, guys. Feel free to repeat this, but you get the general idea.